Good afternoon, and welcome to this uh, afternoon meeting at Anchor Baptist Church, the 2nd of May, 2021. We appreciate you stopping by and being a part of this service. We encourage you to share this feed with others so that they as well can be helped by the Word of God, especially Anchor Baptist Church family. Thank you for uh, being a part of this meeting. I have a few things I'd like you to be praying about, and then we'll get into our Bible study preaching time. The church anniversary is coming up, as most of you are aware. June 6th uh, is the anniversary, 11 a.m. We will have one service that day, 11 a.m., and we plan to meet outside. And so if you have not yet uh, reserved a spot for your car, uh, truck, vehicle, whatever, or a seat to sit in outside, please let me know as soon as you possibly can. Uh, There are a limited number of actual seats, uh, and then there's also a limited number of cars, too, but we have plenty of room right now for cars, but the seats are actually quite limited, and so we'll be giving you more details about that as we get a little bit closer to June 6th, Uh, but we're excited about that, praying that God would be honored and glorified as we celebrate 20 years. The first service of Anchor Baptist Church was June 3rd, 2001. And uh, to be very honest, I, have, I can't believe we're looking at 20 years that have already gone by. Uh, it's to God's glory, and we praise Him for it. Now, we're planning on mailing out postcards all over uh, the Burnaby, Coquitlam, New West. Depending on how far it reaches, I don't know. But uh, that's the second thing I'd like to announce and have you pray with me about. Uh, we are seeking God's help in getting out 110,000 postcards The uh, order has already been sent to the printer, and uh, we're using a local printer this year. We should be picking them up uh, by the middle of next week, middle of this week, excuse me, middle of this week, and and then getting them to Canada Post by the end of this week. And so pray about the project, please. We need God's uh, touch on it. Uh, Obviously, uh, there is a financial uh, need. And the total cost is $25,000 approximately. And that's for printing 110,000 postcards and mailing them through Canada Post. We're doing this because uh, we want to honor the Lord and we want to get the gospel out. But we're also going right on the heels of the uh, Canada Project through Bearing Precious Seed, the John and Romans Canada Project. And so the flyer, the postcard, has been designed to kind of look exactly like that on the cover And we're tying into that, I guess, is the way to say it. So uh, if you are from Anchor Baptist Church, I hope you will pray and then give something toward the project. If you're not from Anchor Baptist Church, we invite you to do the same. We invite you to please pray. Please please pray for God's touch on it. And then if you're interested in giving toward it, we're not asking you, but if you're interested, you can find out how to do that at anchoredinjesus.com, anchoredinjesus.com. And there's a way that you can contribute to it. All right, if you have your Bibles, I hope you have a Bible and maybe something to write notes with. We're going to Psalm 112 this afternoon, Psalm 112. And with the Lord's help, I'd like to speak to you on this theme, them that fear the Lord, them that fear the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this opportunity to open your word. And I pray, God, that our hearts have already been softened and opened and ready to receive. We yield this meeting to you, Father. Holy Spirit of God, fill the speaker and listener with your spirit. Holy Spirit, guide us. Holy Spirit, if there's someone that's not saved that's listening this afternoon, please bring them uh, to their knees. Please bring them under conviction that today would be the day of their salvation. Father, I pray that there would be a revival of the fear of God in our life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Psalm 112, them that fear the Lord. The Bible says, praise ye the Lord, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. We're going to go through that here in just a moment, Psalm 112. But I want to remind you, the Bible says in 1 John 4, 8, God is love. And I hope you know that today, God loves you. And if you haven't been told that in a while, I'm telling you right now, God loves you. And if you're not saved and, and, you're, and you're a sinner, well, we know everyone's a sinner, right? But if you've never been saved, you've never been born again, 
then I want to tell you that as well this afternoon. God sent Jesus Christ, His one and only Son, His only begotten Son, uh, to die a, a, a death on the cross, to be buried, and then He rose again the third day, and He lives today, and He's seated at the right hand of His Father in heaven, interceding on behalf of believers. And He wants to be your Savior today. He wants to be. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you saved? Are you ready for death? That's kind of a morbid thought, isn't it? I think a lot of people right now are thinking about death, probably a lot more than normal uh, than 13 months ago. Uh, but I'll tell you, I'm so thankful that uh, uh, my eternal home, my eternal dwelling place is secure in the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say that today? Do you know him? Is he your savior? And I, I, I trust Him. We've, prayed, we've been praying for you. We may not know who you are, but we've been praying for you that you would know the Lord and that you would be saved. Uh, the reason why you can be saved is what I just said a moment ago. God loves you. God loves you. God is full of mercy and God is full of grace and God is full of compassion. We know that His loving kindness and, and uh, we know that all of that is connected with it. God is good. We know that from the Word of God. He does good, Psalm 119, verse number 68. And so God is wonderful and God is marvelous and, and God is uh, good. But, or and maybe, maybe and, and though God's Word says that this loving God, this merciful God, this uh, gracious God is to be feared. Over and over in the Word of God, we discover the importance of fearing God. It is not right to only see God as love, but God is also to be feared. Romans chapter 2 and verse number 4 has been a verse of Scripture that we have been relating to in the, in the recent days. I've noticed it in, in, in our services and in other services that I've been listening to. I think the Canadian Revival Conference, Romans 2, 4, the Bible says, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? God loves sinners. God loves sinners so much that God wants sinners to go to heaven. But he hates sin so much that he created a place called hell. Now, I'll tell you, God did not create hell for you or me. God created hell for the devil and his demons and for the judgment of sin. That's why it's there. And so, uh, for those that reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so, as we think about this, though, the importance of fearing the Lord. What does it mean to fear the Lord? In this place that we read just a moment ago, Psalm 112, the word fear means fear of impending danger, trembling, to see ourselves as weakness and God as strength. Well, that's a mouthful, but that pretty much sums it up, doesn't it? To see ourselves as weak and God as strong. That's what it means to fear the Lord. It means to take God seriously. To take God at His word. I wonder, dear believer, today, uh, we're, we're beginning a brand new month. We're just getting into a brand new month. I wonder today, do you take God's word seriously? And you say, of course I take God's word seriously, Pastor. Okay, then your actions will prove that. My actions will prove that. The way I conduct myself, the way I carry myself through the week will actually say whether or not I really am fearing the Lord. In the world in which you and I live, it's not a earth shattering to say that there is very little fear of God. Again, the definition we're giving is fear of impending danger, trembling, and to see ourselves as weak and God is strong. You know, so many people look at themselves in the mirror and think, well, I've really done, I've really been successful in my life, and I've worked up the corporate ladder in my life, and I've worked hard for my retirement, and I, 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 I. There's very little fear of God. Unfortunately, that type of thinking has even made its way into the life of the believer from time to time. They believe that they have done this, and they have done that, and and yet, uh, we know that if we really are honest with ourselves, we know that it isn't anything of us, but it's everything of our loving 
God and Heavenly Father. But it's missing in the world in which we live. It's missing in the, in the people in which we work with. The Bible says in Psalm 36 and verse 1, the transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before His eyes. No fear of God before His eyes. In Romans 3 and 18, the Bible says there is no fear of God before their eyes. Oh, church family, oh, dear Christian that's watching today, oh, unsaved man, unsaved lady that's watching today, it is vital. In fact, uh, in fact it's vital that we have a proper understanding of the fear of God, and it's, and it's vital that we practice it every day. According to Psalm 112, what we just read a moment ago, and we're going to work our way through this chapter now, we're going to have to follow along quickly because you have several things. I hope you make note of these. There are certain attributes that are attributed to those who fear the Lord. And so, them that fear the Lord. What are these attributes? Number one, we saw it in verse number one. Them that fear the Lord are blessed. Look what it says there, please. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Psalm 128. Psalm 128. And also verse number one. God's word says, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. If a man will take God seriously, that means he fears God. If a man will take God's word seriously, if a young lady, if a teenager will take God's word seriously, if a single mom will take God's word seriously, if a, if, if a college student, if a university student, if a senior saint will take God's word seriously, here's a great promise today that we will know the blessing of God. And by the way, who doesn't want the blessing of God on their life? Who doesn't want the blessings of God to be poured out on their life? I don't know anyone in their right mind that doesn't want the blessing of God on their life. And so here we see it when we take God seriously, when we take God's word seriously, when we fear the Lord, blessings come into our life. To know the blessedness of God is to know the best of God. You know, God was, doesn't want to just give you and me uh, second best. There is no such thing with God in that respect. God gives us his best. Again, we talked about it just a moment ago. God gave us his son. God gave us the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. God gave us the hope that heaven is our eternal home. And so why wouldn't God want to bless our life now? Why wouldn't God want to give us joy unspeakable and full of glory? And so I'm thankful today that as someone who seeks to take God seriously and take God's word seriously and fear God properly, the Bible says they will be blessed. Psalm 1.1, maybe you're familiar with it, says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Blessed. Psalm 2.12, Blessed are all they that put their trust in Him. And this, this word blessed, or blessed if you will, uh, can also has to do with happy. And uh, it's, it's, much, it's much more fulfilling to be living the Christian life in the fear of God. And there's much more happiness that comes our way and peace and joy that comes our way. Psalm 33 and verse 12, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And oh, don't we need that in Canada today? Don't we need a nation that needs to come back to the Lord or, or start out with the Lord in many cases? And that nation will be blessed. The Bible says that the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. I love Psalm 34, 8. Blessed is the, uh, oh, taste and see, excuse me. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Where is your trust today, sir? Where is your trust today, ma'am? It must be in the Lord for you to be blessed. And the Bible says here, them that fear the Lord, they will be blessed. Them that fear the Lord will be blessed. What does it mean to fear the Lord? Remember, it means to take God seriously. It means to realize that I am weak, but He is strong. Psalm 84 and verse 12, O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Do you get the idea that there is a blessed life to the one who fears the Lord? There is a blessed life to those who trust the Lord. If you and I will fear the Lord, we have a guarantee we will be blessed. You want something guaranteed? God's Word is, has guarantees all through it. They're called promises. Many of these promises, though, are contingent upon the way I live my life. 
But I don't have to live my life in the power of Ben Turner. I can live my life in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. So there is no excuse. There is no excuse, Christian, to not have a blessed life. Because God has given us the power to live a life that fears him. And when we live a life that takes God at his word and realizes that we are weak and that he is strong, then what do we have? We have a blessed life. If you will fear the Lord, if we will fear the Lord, we will be blessed of God. Uh, then maybe the opposite of that is also true. No fear of God means no blessed life. You say, well, Pastor Turner, I don't, have, I don't feel like I have a blessed life. Well, maybe you haven't been fearing God. Maybe you have been trying to live the Christian life in the power of self. Maybe you haven't recognized yourself as weak and in need of God's power. Maybe you haven't been uh, taking God's word seriously lately. Someone that doesn't read, the God, doesn't read the word of God on a regular basis, it would, be my, uh, it would be my opinion they don't take God's word seriously. If you want to know how to live life, if you want to know how to put your life together to, or glorify God like you'd have to put together something that you order, order from the store, you better read the instruction manual, and I better read the instruction manual. God's given us everything necessary to be able to put our lives together for his honor and glory. So, one of the attributes of someone that fears God is he is blessed. Number two, look with me, if you will, at verse number two. Psalm 112, verse number two Someone that fears God, his seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. This is all talking about the man or the woman that fears God. Number two, someone that fears God will have a strong family. Will have a strong family. A lack of the fear of the Lord is something that is coming into our homes and it is wreaking havoc on our homes. And I want to talk to the dads right now. I want to talk to the husbands right now. It's our duty. It's our responsibility. And I would say it's a great privilege uh, that we have to lead our homes to fear God to lead our homes to recognize that God is in control and God has a plan and God has a will and, and God is good to us and he's taking care of us and we show that appreciation for him by fearing him. As a husband, if I do not fear the Lord, I am placing my family in danger. If I do not fear the Lord, the blessing of the Lord is lost on my family. No one ever hurts only themselves. You say, well, I'm living this way and it's only bothering, it's only affecting me. And you know, you've heard preaching about that. You don't need to hear it repeated over and over again. You know what? Yes, we do. Because repetition is the key to learning that you may make a decision today about, the, about fearing God, but it isn't going to just impact you. If I were to make that decision in a positive way or a negative way, the impact or the ripple effect is going to come to the family in which God has entrusted me with. If you're backslidden today, I want you to know that it's affecting someone besides you. If you're living in sin right now, I want you to know it's affecting someone. It's not just affecting you. If you're not living in the fear of God, I want you to know that the blessings of God have been taken from you, and they, but they have also possibly been taken from someone else. Oh, the greatest thing we can teach our children when they're very young and, uh, is to learn to fear the Lord. You see, when a child learns to fear the Lord, and by the way, remember, the definition of fearing God, as we said a moment ago, is not, a sense of, is not in a sense of being scared of God, but it's in a sense of seeing ourselves as weak, but God is strong. Look, the greatest thing you can teach your child is that in themselves they are weak, but in following God they have great strength. Our God is big and strong and mighty. Our God can do anything but fail. Our God is a rock. Our God is our high tower. And there's great help and grace and mercy in our God. And all of this wrapped up as we seek to fear Him, as we recognize that in and of ourselves, there dwelleth no good thing. Oh, but a life that's yielded to the Lord there's no telling what God can do with a life that is surrendered to Him, with a life that is fearing Him. It will be, it will, there will be a strong life there for someone that fears God. When children learn to fear the Lord at a young age, 
It carries them through life from one blessing and one challenge and one difficulty. But the fear of God, it brings blessing. The fear of God uh, helps us have a strong family. Let's look at number three. Verse four, it takes a bit of a turn here, doesn't it? Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. Number four, or excuse me, number three, he will have dark times in his life. Those that fear the Lord, those that fear the Lord, let's review, I hope you're taking notes. Those that fear the Lord, number one, will have a blessed life. The blessing of the Lord. Don't you want to be blessed by the Lord? I sure do. I need to be blessed by the Lord more and more. The older I get, the more of the Lord I need. I recognize I need. How about you? The blessed life, the one that God has for you, it comes with those who fear the Lord. And then uh, those who fear the Lord will have a strong family. I hope, I hope fathers and mothers today that are listening and parents and I hope, uh, excuse me, uh, husbands and wives and children even that are listening and teenagers that will listen and, and, uh, and university students, no matter what age we are, and grandparents for sure, I hope and pray that we want to have a strong family. And by the way, that doesn't have to be just in the biological sense. It could also be that we desire to have a strong church family. Oh, praise the Lord for the ability to be able to have a premier service like this. But oh, we're looking and longing for the day when we can all be gathered together in person once again and, uh, and fellowshipping and worshiping and all that comes along with it. But I hope and pray that even in this day, even in 2021, that you're praying that the Anchor Baptist Church and other Bible preaching churches in our community and around our country of Canada, that we will have a greater fear of God. Because that brings along with it a strong family. I believe we could also say that about the church because the church is a family, isn't it? But just because we fear God doesn't mean that our life is only going to be a bed of roses, right? You know what that means? A bed of ease and without challenges. The psalmist says here that there is light in the darkness, which means there's darkness, okay? We'll talk about that light in just a minute. So number three, he will have dark times in his life. We've been dealing with this. We've been not dealing with. We've been going through the patch club, and we're doing it right now. Uh, God willing, while you're watching this, we're having patch club, and a lot to do with patch club uh, because it uh, talks about uh, sailors and boats and water. And a lot of that uh, it talks about things with uh, sailing, and everybody here knows, I would think, those of you that are online now or watching later, uh, that sometimes when, when you're on the sea, uh, the water isn't always uh, calm. Uh, maybe you've seen a television program or maybe you've experienced your, it yourself where you've been out on the water and the, the waves have been, I think one of the words they use is choppy, a choppy wave. You don't want to be in a ch time of choppy waves, do you? And you get seasick. And, uh, all, and all that comes along with that, and I won't go into detail there. Fearing the Lord does not guarantee that our life will not be without some choppy ways. Fearing the Lord does not guarantee that our life will always be characterized by smooth sailing. But here's the blessedness in all this. It does ensure that we have a good captain with a capital C. We have a great captain that's going through this life with us. Turn in your Bibles quickly to Mark chapter 4. We're going to come right back to Psalm 12. But go over with me, please, to Mark chapter 4. Them that fear the Lord. I hope God's helping you right now. Them that fear the Lord. The blessings of God have eluded me lately, Pastor Turner. How's your fear of God? The blessings of God have... Uh, my family seems to be weakening, uh, Pastor Turner, in these days. How's your family unit fearing the Lord? Pastor Turner, I'm in the middle of, the, of some 
choppy waves right now. There's some dark times in my life. Hey, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not fearing the Lord because the Bible says here that to the upright uh, there ariseth light and darkness means darkness is there. Look at Mark chapter number four, please, and verse number 35. God's word says, in the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. You know, that's, a, that's an important thing to mark in your Bible. Jesus said to them, We're, we are going to the other side. Now, we have the, we have the great op- privilege of being able to read and see the story as it develops. They didn't have that privilege. The disciples did not know the end from the beginning. The disciples did not know what God had in mind, what Jesus Christ had in mind here. We can read down through the rest of the passage and we can see what happened. They were just in the moment. We have the, op- we have the uh, luxury, if you will, of reading the entire counsel of the Word of God and seeing how it was stormy here, but what happened? Look at verse 36. And when they had sent uh, them away, when he had sent uh, away the multitude, they took him even as he, he was in the ship. Okay, so Jesus Christ is in the ship with the disciples. And there were also with him other little ships. All of a sudden, here we go. There arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. What does that mean? It was full of water. There was water everywhere. And uh, this was a, uh, obviously a tense time in the middle of a storm, uh, water in the boat where it's not supposed to be. Verse 38, he was in the hinder part of the ship Asleep on a pillow. Wow. You know, I don't know. Maybe, you're, maybe you sleep like a rock or maybe not. But uh, that would be one where I would probably not be able to sleep through it. But again, we're talking about the Son of God who had already told them, what did he tell them, church? Let us pass over. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Again, Not too critical because I would have probably been doing the same thing, but he already told them we're going to pass over. And he arose and rebuked the wind, verse 39, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? And that wasn't, they weren't fearing the Lord, they were fearing the storm. Let me just help you right now. Let me help me too. I need it. I need help. Pray for me. Let's not fear the storm. Let's not fear the darkness. Let's not fear the choppy waves. Let's not fear the cancer. Let's not fear the uh, loss of a job. Let's not fear the difficulty. Let's not fear the challenge. Let's fear the Lord. When we fear the Lord, remember, we're saying we are weak, but He is strong. We're saying that, yes, this is choppy, but I know the captain is with me. And we're saying, yes, I don't like this situation that I'm in. I don't like the the trial. I don't like the difficulty, but I'm so thankful that God is with me in it all. And he said in Hebrews 13, 5, that he would never leave me and he would never forsake me. He even said that even if I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't have to fear any evil for he is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. I'm so thankful that we have him in the dark times of life. And notice the Bible says, how is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another. Check this out. What manner of man is this? This is in the beginning stages of his ministry. What, who is, I mean, what manner of man is this that when he tells the wind, calm down, when he tells the wind, be quiet, when he tells the sea to calm down and all of it, that they obey him? Fearing the Lord does not guarantee smooth sailing, but it does ensure we have a great captain with us every moment of the day. Storms may come, difficulties may come, challenges may come, but as we fear the Lord, remember, the Bible says we will be blessed. You say, Pastor Turner, it's very difficult to look at this as a blessing. Well, that's, what fearing, that's where fearing the Lord helps you. That's where strong in faith, giving God the glory, our theme this year. 2021, strong in faith, giving God the glory. Beginning of a new month, strong in faith, giving God the glory, fearing the Lord. It brings blessing, it brings strength to the family, but also fearing the Lord, there will be dark times. 
Notice number four, we said we would talk about this one word as we go back to Psalm 112. Psalm 112, notice this one word. The Bible says in verse number uh, four again, under the upright there ariseth, what's the next word, church? Light. You see it there? I would circle that word. I would underline that word. I would highlight that word. I would, I would do everything I can to make that word important because, number four, those that fear the Lord, them that fear the Lord, will have light in the dark times. I love what it says there. Unto the upright there ariseth light. There ariseth light. You know something that arises every morning? The sun. You know sometimes, uh, uh, many times as we know here on the left coast, uh, many times we don't see it, but it's coming up. There ariseth something in the east every morning. It's called the sun. And I want you to know and I want you to be encouraged that whether you see the light and whether you see the hand of God, the hand of God is in your life. It'll always be in your life as a believer. And we will have light and there is light in the dark times of life. That is a promise made to them that fear the Lord. God's guidance is always available to them that fear the Lord. God's goodness is always available to them that fear the Lord. God's grace is always available to them that fear the Lord. Uh, God's way is always available to them that he will he will light our path he will guide our path as jesus said it in john 14 6 i am the way i want to encourage you this afternoon he is the way to heaven but he's also the way the truth and the life even now and we who fear the lord and i need to fear him in a greater way don't you the Bible promises me something that if i fear the lord there is never a time that i'll be alone in the dark a light will arise in the dark times and that light is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ in the person, though, of the Holy Spirit of God. Oh, I want to thank the Lord today for the light that ariseth during dark times. I want to thank the Lord today as I look back on my years of life and look back on the history of Anchor Baptist Church now, almost 20 years, one month away from 20 years. As we look back on 20 years, we can see many times uh, that were uncertain. there was uncertainty. Uh, there was things that we had no idea what would come next. And uh, like right now, right? And uh, praise the Lord, there ariseth light every time. He is faithful. He is long-suffering. We can be anchored in Him and know that He will never let us down. Those that fear the Lord, yes, they'll have dark times. And yes, they'll have, uh, praise the Lord, strong families and they'll be blessed. But praise the Lord, those who have dark times will have light. Those that fear the Lord will have light in the dark times. There ariseth Light in the darkness. It's amazing what one candle will do in a dark room, isn't it? You've seen that before. It's amazing what one little light will do. It's amazing how a little night light will, will calm the fears of a child who thinks there's a, the, a monster under his bed or whatever that child is thinking of. It's amazing what just a little bulb will do. And oh, as we think about that today and as we are children of God and there might be different things that we're worried about, we shouldn't be worried about anything, but it, it happens, doesn't it? I want to encourage you that as we fear the Lord, there is light that ariseth in the darkness two more we got a motor we got a motor look at number number next number five look at verse four again he is gracious full of compassion and righteous skip down to verse number nine please he hath dispersed notice this he hath given to the poor his righteousness endureth forever his horn shall be exalted with honor. Them that fear the Lord, number four, or excuse me, number five, will live unselfishly. Them that fear the Lord will live unselfishly. You know, the antithesis of that is someone who is selfish does not fear the Lord. You know, I would say, you'd have to raise your hand. I'd have to raise both my hands that there are times and seasons of times, uh, seasons of our life where we are selfish. It could be in your marriage that you want your will to be done. You want your this and you want this to be done and that to be done. Never even taking into consideration the needs of your spouse. And on and on it goes. We could talk about that. No, selfish people do not fear the Lord. Selfish people are only concerned about themselves. They're only, it's obviously described in the word right there. 
But you know what? As God, as the fear of the Lord permeates our life, you know what we do? We take on the characteristics of the Lord, and it's all about others. Others, Lord, yes, others. Let this my motto be. I pray today that others would see Jesus Christ in me. Those who fear the Lord live unselfishly. Those who fear the Lord, the Bible says they're willing to disperse, to give of themselves, to give of their wealth, to give of their time, to give of their energy, to give of their life, which is time, isn't it? What does it say here? He hath given to the poor. I don't know that that always has to mean somebody that doesn't have much money. I think it could mean someone who's poor in spirit. I think it could mean someone who maybe is having a rough day and they're poor on joy, you know. They don't have much joy or happiness or, or a blessing in their life. And they might be a lost person. And we allow the fear of the Lord, living unselfishly, we allow the fear of the Lord uh, to encourage them as we help them, as we give them something. Uh, It doesn't have to be about material. I'm not talking about material things. But we give to someone else. It's allowing the attitude of uh, being selfless, living for others. This happens when we fear the Lord. You see, as we abide in the vine, John 15, As we abide in the vine, we will fear the Lord. As we fear the Lord, we will be blessed. That's what the Bible tells us here in Psalm 112. As we fear the Lord, our families families will be strong, our biological families, but also our uh, spiritual families. The local church will be strong as we fear the Lord. As we fear the Lord, there will be dark times in our life. But as we fear the Lord, light will arise during those times. As we fear the Lord, we will live unselfishly. Oh, are you living only for what you want? Are you considering others? Look, we have the, we have the greatest message to deliver. We have the greatest gift to present to people. And no, it's not food although it's fine to give somebody a meal. And no, it's not shelter, although it's fine to help people in those ways. Look, we have the opportunity to live, uh, live for the glory of the Lord and in the power of the Holy Spirit of God, delivering the message of the gospel. So many times I am not willing to give, to the, uh, live, excuse me, uh, give the gospel to others because I'm living selfishly. What do you mean, I'm living in a way that I care more about what they think of me than what they need from the gospel. What they might say, how they might respond. And so instead of fearing the Lord and living in boldness and speaking the truth in love, I live for self and I don't want to take that opportunity to give the gospel. No, if I'm living for the Lord and I'm fearing the Lord, I'm living a life full of His grace. It's not in you, it's not in me. We can do anything for the Lord. We're living a life full of His grace, full of His mercy, full of His compassion. Oh, but I want to take a moment on this last one, number six. Look at verse nine. We just read the first part of the verse. He hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. Number six. Them that fear the Lord take God seriously about sin. This might be the one, this might be the one that you and I need the most. I'm not sure. Take God, when we fear the Lord, we take God seriously. Oh, that's just a little this or a little that, but that's not taking God seriously about sin. As we've heard said in our life, that's just a little a little lie, a little white lie. That's not taking God seriously. Oh, that's just a slight uh, uh, this or a slight that. No, it's not taking God seriously. We cannot be upright and righteous. We cannot be fearing the Lord as He deserves us to fear Him uh, if we're playing with sin. I can think a lot of I can think of a lot of things more dangerous to play with than to play. A lot of things less dangerous, excuse me, to play with than to play with sin. There's nobody here listening right now that would watch your child go over and stick his finger in, a, in an electrical outlet that was li- alive. You would, you would never just watch them go over and do that. 
You know, I want to say lovingly and, and, and challengingly, we're watching our kids. We're watching our kids right now. Some of us are watching our kids living in sin and we're saying nothing about it. We're watching them do far greater things than going over to a, to a live, live uh, light socket, electrical outlet, and putting their finger in or taking a fork and sticking it in there. We're watching them do a lot more things. We're allowing things into our home that we should not be allowing into our home and we're allowing things into our life that should not be allowed into our life. The point is we're not taking God seriously about sin and it's why. It's because we do not fear the Lord as we ought to. There's no way to be a friend of God and a friend of the world at the same time. Turn quickly, if you will, uh, to verse, uh, James chapter 4. James chapter 4. I think maybe you know this verse. James chapter 4. Hebrews, James. James 4, 4 says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? See the question mark? Don't you know that? Don't you know that you're playing with sin and you're, 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 um, you're allowing sin uh, uh, to stay in your life and to be a part of your life and, and you're, you're even maybe condoning it or you're trying to justify it? He said, don't you know that that's the enemy, that's, that's, that's an enemy of God, enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. In a way, those who do not fear the Lord live as if there were no God. Now, you know what? I'm probably preaching to primarily born-again Christians right now. And if I asked you, is there a God? You would say, of course, Pastor Turner, there's a God. And you would even be able to say that he, he's in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Of course, Pastor, why are you asking me that? Because many times the way Christians are living, and I could be guilty of this too, is that we're living as if there is no God. In other words, we're just, we're just doing whatever we want, living however we want, as if there is no God. Now, I would expect someone who's, a, who's an atheist, whatever that is, right? I would expect someone who claims to be an atheist to just do whatever they want and live whatever they want because they don't think there's a God. Now, that doesn't mean there is no God because they don't think there is no God. I'm saying, though, I could, I could understand someone like that living in a certain way, but someone who carries a Bible and who says that God is uh, the creator of the world and his son is the savior of the world and his holy spirit is indwelling them but living like there is no god that's a different story how are you living today are you living as if there were no god are you going to go to work tomorrow monday morning are you going to go to work as if as if as if you're not a christian as if no one around there they still don't know that you know the lord they still don't hear they have never heard your testimony you've never given anyone a gospel track who you work with maybe that's no one that's great if everybody listening right now has been sowing in the gospel seeds at work i'm just saying that uh, god help us to be living a life that fears him meaning i'm weak meaning he's strong the fear of the Lord, taking God seriously, taking God's word seriously. I don't know about you, but I want my life and I want my home and I want the Anchor Baptist Church and I want, quite frankly, I want every church in, the, in Canada that is standing on the word of God and preaching biblical truths from the word of God, I want them all to be blessed. But the root of that blessing I believe we've seen this afternoon that the root of that blessing is in the fear of the Lord. Let me ask you, are you one who fears the Lord? Are you one who takes God's word seriously? How about this? Are you teachable? Are you someone who comes into a service asking the Lord to change you? I believe that's an indicator of someone who fears the Lord. Seeking God's word to change them. Not the, not the preacher. Preacher doesn't change anybody. Missionary doesn't change anybody. Evangelist doesn't change anybody. But you know who does? God and his word. And when we fear him, we open this book for our morning devotions and we say, God, change me. God, correct me. God, teach me. 
God, I'm empty. I need you to fill my cup, Lord. God, I need some bread from heaven. I need you to quench this thirsting of my soul. I need you to feed me till I want no more. God, I fear you, and I know you have something for me today. I know you love me, God. I know you've saved me. And I need something for today. I need manna from heaven. God, I can't get it anywhere else but you. Proverbs 1, 28 and 29. I close with this. Proverbs 1, 28 and 29. Let's actually turn over there. I have it in my notes, but let's turn over there quickly. Thank you for listening. Proverbs 1, 28 and 29. Let's, let's take, take a look at these. Read them. You read them where you're at, and I'll read them here. Proverbs 1, 28. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. Mm. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Wow, that's pretty convicting, isn't it? For that they hated knowledge. Notice this last phrase and did not choose the fear of the Lord. I think, I know, excuse me, I know it is vital for us to be bringing God all the glory we ought to be. It is vital. For us to be blessed, for us to have a strong home, for us to have light in darkness in, light, light in dark times, for us to live unselfishly, for us to take sin seriously, it is imperative that every day we choose to live in the fear of the Lord. I hope today you'll take a moment and examine yourself and see, do you have any of these characteristics in your life? Maybe some of them you're missing. Maybe something else the Holy Spirit of God pointed out. Why don't you do business with Him right now? This service is just about to end. Why don't you do business with Him right now? Why don't you confess that you have not been living in the fear of the Lord? Agree with God about that. Confess that to the Lord. Forsake that to the Lord. And begin right now, today, this second day of May, and every day that remains in your life, to, to start every day in saying, God, I want to take your word seriously. I want to take your will seriously. And just right on down the line. These are all indicators. Psalm 112, you can review that too. These are all indicators of them that fear the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity to speak about this topic. I need it. I need to apply it. And I pray that I will. Lord, I would pray even right now for that one or that two people that are listening that still do not know that heaven is their home when they die. I pray that even now they would go to the website anchoredinjesus.com and connect with us, contact us. They would see the gospel film that is on our website and they would repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved even today. And then, Lord, many that are watching that know you as Savior, I pray that we would start living like there's a God we would have the fear of the Lord that, we, that would be our, one of our leading points in our life is the fear of the Lord. Thank you so much for your word because it is your word that continues to change lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you have a great rest of your Lord's Day. And as I've said many, many times, if there's anything I can do to help you, if you have any prayer requests that you'd like to share with me, you can contact me through the church website, anchoredinjesus.com. And then, please pray for anniversary number 20, June 6, 2021. These 110,000 postcards that are going out, we desperately need your prayers that God would bless it and His hand would be on it. Have a great rest of your day. God bless you.